All right, hi everybody. Welcome to your video on timers. We are gonna take a look at how to set up timers and for this video, there is no starter code. So head to the P5 editor and just start a new project. Make sure that after you start it, you give it a good name. So for example, I might call this APCSP how to make timers. Um, once I've given it a name, make sure you go up to file and you click save to make sure this stays in your account forever. This is another one where we're going to be experimenting with a looping structure before we kind of move to something else. So please save often. It is your friend. I don't want anyone to get caught in an infinite loop and lose their progress. Um, like with all things in our videos, please pause as you need to. <clears throat> I move at my speed in these videos because you can pause and you can rewatch whenever you need to do that. So please take advantage. Um, and if anything is ever not clear, come to office hours. We can talk through anything you need to talk through. You can ask me questions. You can ask me to explain in other ways, and I will do my best to assist you. So when we're talking timers in P5, um, we are going to start by making timers that count down. So they're going to start high and they're going to get lower until it gets to zero or whatever number where something's going to happen. And you guys can definitely make timers that function a little differently. You can make timers that count up. Um, you can make timers that don't stop at zero, they stop at random numbers, or it goes negative. You can make timers for different amounts of time. Um, but we're going to explore this together. So the very first thing that we need to understand, because it's going to be incredibly helpful to us, is that there is something in P5 called frame count. Um, and I'm going to show you with some really big text on the screen. You don't need to code this part. I just want to show you. Frame count counts the number of times that the draw function has run. So I'm going to stick this in the middle of the screen. I'm going to hit play. Um, the draw loop runs about 60 times a second. So we are already at almost 400 um, frame counts. It runs a whole bunch. And we can use frame count and the fact that it runs about 60 times a second to our benefit as we're making timers. So frame count is one of those system variables like mouse X and mouse Y. It's just already held in the computer. It starts counting when you hit play and you don't need to do anything or worry about that at all. Um, so this is just hold in the back of your brain. Now, the second thing we're going to need for a timer is we are going to need a variable that holds the amount of time we're putting on our timer. <clears throat> so I'm going to make one called timer and I'm going to give it a value of five right away. So at the top of my code, I'm writing let timer equals five. And some of you may have noticed that I am declaring and giving value outside of setup and outside of draw. And that's because giving just numeric values can happen outside of setup. The reason why setup gets pushed so hard on you as a place to give value is it's, um, if you're using a global variable, variable anyway, it's not a bad habit to get into. But also when we use things like color or random that are specific to P5, P5 specific things have to be used inside of these um, two functions or inside of any other P5 callback function. So on line one saying let timer equals five, fair game, nothing P5 specific. This would be the same if I was in P5 versus if I was just doing it without any of these P5 functions. Um, the rest of this though, is gonna be very specific to P5. So some of you might be thinking that because we're learning about while loops and also just because while sounds like a time word, that we might set this up kind of like this. Um, while timer is greater than or greater than zero, so while the timer is more than zero, uh, let's display the timer. We'll do this one in the middle of the screen too. And then after we display the timer, let's make the timer go down by one. So I'm gonna use minus equals one because that'll take one away from the timer. And we might be thinking, let's try this and see what it does. And if you want to type this into your code, you're welcome to try. It is not going to run the way you intended. And some of you might be thinking from lessons back, oh my god, I know the solution. If I'm using a while loop, my variable has to be inside my draw function too, because the while loop happens all at once. We learned that. And if you run this, you'll actually get it to run, but it's not going to show anything. And that's because one of those things we learned about with my ugly drawing in the last video is that the while loop runs all at one time. We go out of the draw and it zoop, 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 runs around and it's done. That's not how I want my timer to work. I want my timer to work based on the draw function and based on how many times the draw function has run with frame count because I need to make sure that it's counting down every second. Computers run so fast that if you use this while loop, 
it'll take the timer down to zero in like less than a millisecond because it's running like faster than the eye can see. In a single second, the draw loop manages to run 60 times. That's crazy. So timers, we actually can't use while loops for. And I know that's a little bit of a deviation from our week. Um, but because I think these two things are so related in people's minds, I think it's worth talking about together. So I'm going to put my variable back up on line one, and this is the part where you're going to start coding with me. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and make my timer using a conditional statement. So I'm going to use an if else statement inside my draw function. So again, I'm between line seven and line 14 where those curly braces open and close. And on line 11, I'm going to say if, I'll set up my curly, or my parentheses, I'll set up my curly braces, and my condition that I'm looking for, let me line that up, the condition that I'm looking for is going to be for one second to have passed, and also for my timer to still be greater than zero, because I want my timer to count down to zero, and then we're kind of done. Now, we said that frame count variable, it counts how many times the draw function has run, how many frames have happened, and we said that about 60 frames happen every second. So I can use that frame count variable to count the number of seconds for me. And I do this with a new mathematical operator called a modulo that you guys will be learning more about next week. Um, a modulo, which we'll take a deep dive into, I promise, is like this fancy new part of math that looks for the remainder of a division problem. So if I say frame count modulo, which is a parentheses symbol, 60 is the same as zero, that means that 60 went evenly into frame count, and if 60 went evenly into frame count, one second has passed, because there are 60 frames every one second. So this is my way of counting one second, and I'm going to make a note. Frame count mod 60 equals zero means 60 goes evenly into frame count, aka one second has passed. That makes sure that things don't happen kind of endlessly forever. Um, as soon as we like are at 61, it's been more than one second and we won't keep running this conditional. So important piece here. Now I don't just want to look for the frame count to be the mod 60 equals zero. I also want to make sure that um, my timer is bigger than zero because I don't want a time for negative numbers. Now, First, I just want us to watch this time count down. So inside my conditional, I'm going to display my timer. This should be the amount of time that's left. And I'm just going to stick it in the middle of my page at 200, 200. So I have if frame count modulo, which is that percent sign, 60 is the same as zero. That's what's counting one second going by. And again, if you're like, use this for now, mods are coming back at you next week and my timer is still bigger than zero, I want to display my text, and I also want my timer to get smaller. So I'm going to again use my minus equals one, which is me saying whatever my timer was, take one away and save it back to the variable. So let's hit play and just see what happens, and then let's talk about how we can use this. So if I hit play right now, I'm seeing my timer, oh no, I'm seeing my timer and it's going away and it's going away because the background is drawing over it. So let's move that out of my if statement and let's put it on line 10. Now all of this should display in my draw. It should never get drawn over by the background. All right, now I have five, four, three, two, one. So I have this timer, it's displaying on my screen all the time, it's out of my conditional. And then I have this variable, which is changing what's in my timer based on the time. And we can see that it does count down to five. It counts down until it gets to zero, and then it stops. If I were to change this value, it would count differently. It would start at a higher number or a lower number, depending on how I change it. And if I were to change this part of the conditional, it would also change how it's counting. I could have it run until the timer is bigger than two, and it would just count to two and then stop. Um, that's totally fine. You're welcome to mess with this on your own, but right now let's try and use it. So I'm counting down. What am I counting down to? I think that I would like to count down to make something happen. I want to make a circle appear, and then I want that circle to move up my screen to get bigger and also to, let's change the transparency. 
So I'm going to make three variables for my circle. I'm going to say that circle, I'll call it C size, equals 10. I'm going to say that the Y position equals 400. It's going to be at the very bottom of my page. Um, and I'm going to make that get smaller as I go up. And then I'm going to say that the C trans, which is going to be my transparency, is equal to 255. Um, and please remember, transparency is how much you can or cannot see or something. So I'll mark that as transparency. So I have this beautiful conditional for my timer. I'm going to make a completely separate if statement for what happens when my timer gets to zero. So outside of this one, it, and it begins on line 16, it closes on line 18. So outside of that, I'm going to write an if that says if my timer has become the same as zero, let's draw a circle. Let's put that circle at um, middle of the page. Let's put it at Y position is what I called it, right? Yep. Um, let's make it C size big. So I'm using my variables. Let's also give it a fill. Um, I'm going to make it magenta because that's always easy for me to remember. And I'm going to give it that optional fourth value for transparency. So I'm going to make that C trans. Um, so I'm going to make this happen. And then I think I also want in here to change all those values. So every time that this draw function runs and it sees that timer's at zero, I want the Y position to get smaller. So minus equals five. And I want the size to get bigger. So let's do a plus equals one. And then I want the transparency to get less. So let's do C trans minus equals one. So it's going to become bigger and more transparent as it moves up the page. So now let's hit play and see what happens. Now it goes five, four, three, two, one. And then I see my circle move up the page. That moved really fast, so let me slow it down. The whole timer logic, the five, four, three, two, one you see, is coming from displaying the timer text and updating its value using this conditional that made a timer. And then the ellipse you see is all of this condition that we coded down here. So I'm gonna hit play. I get my five, four, three, two, one. I'm at zero, my circle starts, it grows, it gets lighter and lighter and lighter as it goes up the page. And it finally gets big, it slows down, it, it's doing a whole thing. Um, but you guys get the idea of how this works. I can make events triggered at certain times and you can mess with the times. What you guys are going to do with this skill is you're going to try and build me a fireworks show. You guys are going to build different timers. A heads up, each timer is going to need its own timer variable. So you might have timer one, timer two, timer three. You might call them weird things like Susan, completely up to you. And you are going to code out a conditional that makes the timer. Then you are going to code out a condition of what should happen when that timer goes away. So you're going to create shapes, you're going to make them move, you're going to make them change, you're going to make something happen so that they appear and um, go nuts all over the page. You can have them move up, you can have them just explode, you can have use more conditions to have them disappear at a certain point in time. The easiest way to make things disappear is to make their size zero or to move them off the page. Um, but it is up to you. I am just very excited to see your fireworks show. If you guys need help or you have questions, please come to office hours, talk to each other in Slack. That is what we are here for. And we'll see you guys soon.